You're listening to Tyler Talks to Strangers, the podcast where I attempt to better understand the world around me by understanding those who inhabit it with me. Everyone has a story, but I just have so many questions. All right, looking forward to this one. Going to be shooting from the hip, all kinds of questions, fun, deep, would you rathers. You didn't want to see the questions beforehand, so I respect that attitude, that philosophy in life. Just kind of negative. Just surprise me. This is what this guy says. Yeah. But let's start at the beginning. So if you had to describe your life story in, let's say, two to three minutes max, you know, the significant events that got to to where you are today, how would you do it, sir? Um, I, I'd sum it up with with one word. I'm I'm fortunate. I uh I come from a very fortunate background. Uh son of immigrants, grew up in uh, the great state of New Jersey, uh, where dad worked on an assembly line, mom was a school teacher, worked super hard. Uh, found myself after college uh working in New York City, mm. took a transfer, wound up in your neck of the woods in LA, yeah. Tyler, and um From there, kind of uh, migrated down the coast to Orange County, San Diego area, met the missus, got married, had our daughter, and we, because of our love of horses, we Mm -hmm. found ourselves moving to Phoenix, uh, where we live in Scottsdale now. That was a very succinct answer. Most people ramble on for uh, who who knows how long, and you kind of- I'm not that complicated, dude. Yeah, you went for the bulletproof, like the bullet point method, which is actually what I usually ask. And you you nailed that one. Okay, so we got horses, we got, you know, Arizona, a little bit of California in there. Okay, immigrants. Okay, interesting. All right. What countries immigrated from? Immigrated. Spain. Spain. Mom and dad were both born in Spain. Okay. Mom emigrated from Spain and dad uh, found himself in South America until his 20s, right, right. around the Vietnam era where he came and uh, when he was, you know, in his early 20s and uh, wound up in the port of Miami and then migrated up to Jersey eventually. Wow, look at that. Okay, that's a, that's quite the love story right there. Spanish, yeah. very romantic. Yeah. Here's, like an inter- here's an interesting tidbit. Yeah. Mom and dad grew up in the same rural village in Spain. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, they never knew each other over there. It okay. took my dad leaving after the Spanish Civil War, mm. fleeing poverty and everything else. Right. Um, my mom was born. My mom and dad are, you know, not quite made December relationship, but dad's a little older. Okay. My mom, my mom was born. Things were a little bit better there. Um, my mom's side of the family was able to get a visa to the United States straight from Spain. Mm. But my dad's family went from spain to argentina to chile to no to brazil to chile and Mm -hmm. then to the u.s took them much longer but and they never knew each other over there they met in the city of newark new jersey uh you know right around 1970 something and uh had did not know each other in the old country country. but you could see their like little stone houses you know one from another in the oh old my country gosh. back then. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Wow. And you've been, I'm I'm assuming. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. And then uh I always ask if you could extrapolate out the next five to ten years, um, what would you like to be written into your story by then? Anything you're excited about on the horizon? Next five years, let's see. Ten years is too far. So yeah, hit, just go five. Let's Three go, five. we'll go five. Yeah. I'd like, let me see. Um, uh, my daughter at that point will be 16. Okay. So, um, you know, that's going to be challenging and rewarding. She's already a, becoming a nice young lady. I'm sure okay. she'll continue down that path. Um, I'd like to have a black belt in jujitsu by then. I think that's realistic. We're like, you know, three years into training. So yeah, okay. I think in another five years I could get there. Um, I'll be 50 by then. Okay. Um, so hopefully wow. I'm still in reasonably good shape yeah. at that point. Um, and you know, business has gone well, um, for the past 20 years. So I, I hope that trajectory continues. And, um, certainly in five years, I want to be the guy that's, uh, you know, giving back to my own community by employing mm-hmm. people, um, by starting businesses that they can benefit from, mm-hmm. um, so from a business standpoint, I'd like to be there. 
Nice. Wow. So yeah, I do have a life goal of getting a black belt in BJJ or Muay Thai or whatever. Some some martial art. So knowing uh, that I still got plenty of years ahead of me to to knock that off the list is is comforting you know i bet that you're a little younger than me and yeah you got it you got a lifetime yeah. ahead of you don't worry about it just keep yourself in one piece right exactly yes that's the goal i'm in physical therapy as a in healthcare as a pt so hopefully i can oh there you go mitigate some of the damage well, that's what that table is back there okay yes, a little massage table right there nice <laughs> exactly oh uh, sweet okay so that was the intro we're going into the fun first fun question we're going to throw different ones at you know different stages but First one's going to be wasps, mosquitoes, spiders, or cockroaches. Which would you completely eliminate from the planet tomorrow if you could snap your fingers? I fucking hate mosquitoes. 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 Okay. Yeah. And look, mosquitoes are a phenomenon of the Northeast and maybe the Deep South too, right? Right. I moved to LA and I, it was like mosquitoes had disappeared off the face of the earth. And I'm like, where, where are the mosquitoes right. here? And um, yeah, and look, we came to Phoenix in the first year, there were none. The second year, there were none. Third year, we were here. Um, They crept up and we actually had a bunch of mosquitoes. Mm. And let me tell you, as much as I hate mosquitoes, they actually love me. Okay. And will suck my blood. Right. They're all like a hooker on the street corner. Exactly. Yes. (laughs) It's a very one way relationship. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Yes, that is interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't expect Arizona to be. I would feel like it'd be too either not enough standing pools of water for them to do their thing or whatever. But interesting that you guys got it bad over there too. Yeah. Every once in a while, every it, it's it like skips. It's like once every three years we get it bad, and it's it's probably the years where there's more than a couple of inches of rain and you do have that pooled up water. But yeah. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an entomologist. So whatever. <laughs> That's right. Not a mosquitoologist, okay? Not, yeah. yeah, none of that. You've got plenty of experience being bitten, but yes, that's yeah. as far as it goes. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Next question is a would you rather question. Would you rather have a diamond ring or a gold necklace of equal value? Would I rather have a diamond ring or a gold necklace of equal of equal value? Well, I wouldn't wear either. So ah. I'll take the dime, I'll take the diamond ring and I'll give it to my wife. Diamond ring for the wife. Look at that. What? What's your? Uh, I guess because the BJJ stuff, you don't want to have jewelry, and it just makes you know. I just don't like. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a necklace guy, and I'm not a ring guy. Not a flashy I wear a guy. watch, and I and I wear a whoop. Well, yeah, I'm not, I'm whoop. definitely. Yeah, I'm definitely not a flashy guy. No way. You're, you're a straight bones practical guy. I'm yeah. like the F one fifty of dudes. <laughs> <laughs> that should be on your tombstone i'm like the <laughs> f-150 of dudes yeah, yeah that's pretty awesome i like that it's a good tagline the platinum one though you know with the nice wheels right. and the leather interior of course right right please exactly. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have standards here gotta have standards you okay. know well this this question is deep and it kind of leads into maybe a little bit of the tombstone thing and theme okay have you ever thought about suicide at any point in your life I'm going straight morbid on me, huh? I'm going for it. You know what? You said shoot from the hip, the hip so I'm going for yeah. it. Yeah. No, fortunately, I have not. Okay. Um, yeah, I've, 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 I've not historically had a lot to be super depressed about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I describe myself as being fortunate, and like literally, I've sailed a, over a lucky star my entire life. So, mm-hmm. so no, I, okay. I haven't. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the way you, you brought the show on is fortunate gratitude, that kind of mindset. Oh, hell yeah. 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 Well, interesting. Very cool. Well, that's awesome. I hope that smooth sailing is uh, continuing on here. Into the, we'll, 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 there'll, there'll be some waves in the sea, I'm sure, but we'll, we'll the next port, we'll get there. Yeah, it's all about getting to the next port. That makes sense. Um, okay, next one's another deep question. If you all have right. children, you have children. What would you do the same as your parents and what would you do differently or what have you done the same maybe? And what have you done differently? Cause you already have a child. <clears throat> My parents being immigrants, they were very protective of um, what they had. Everything was um, you know, you have to be ready for survival and, mm. you know, don't take any risks. And, uh, and I live my life exactly the opposite, right? I've taken a lot of risks. I've, um, uh, made fortunes, lost them several times over. Um, and I've created some things uh, in the interim, you know, and I, I admire 
my parents for having the steady Eddie lifestyle that maybe they craved coming from mm. a post civil war country or, you know, my dad fled, then fled a dictator in South America and didn't have the opportunities that we have here. And I think, I think I've been fortunate enough to have, um, to be able to roll the dice a little bit and know that it's, this is the United States of America. You're going to be okay. Right. right. Um, so the, the one thing I've imparted on my daughter is um, the value of, of entrepreneurship, of uh, picking yourself up by your bootstraps, which is a misnomer, by the way. You can't actually pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Just saying. Um, try it. Yeah. You can try all you want. <laughs> um, and and, and I, I want her to enable herself to write the story of her own life, not have others with a, you know, whether it be a, a corporate motivation or a very safe idea of what life should be to write that story for her. I want, I want her to do it on her own. And that's, you know, sh she's a, a top level equestrian competitor and that's what yeah. we're doing here in, in Arizona. Nice. I feel like that's got to be a lot on the pocketbook there to afford the whole horse thing, right? You got to work, you got to work hard. You gotta work hard. Make work lots hard, of money. Play hard. Make lots yeah. of money. Yeah. Make lots of money. It's you. You know, to live a fulfilling life and give people yeah. around you a fulfilling life it yeah. requires a lot of money. That could be yes. That is true. I think yeah. The contribution aspect to it, you can broaden a lot of people's worlds with that access to wealth or whatever it is. So I right. Yep. Next question is a fun question. What is the single best way to end the day? I mean, aside from sex, it could be sex. It could be any. It could be anything you want. What do you think? <laughs> right, that's a trick question. So the answer is sex. But the aside sex. from sex, okay. uh, I, I, I'm a voracious reader, right? So I read okay. all different kinds of books. Well, I'll take that back. I read mostly nonfiction. Right. Um, so for me to cozy up with a good book have you know some good training behind you that day mm. you're physically tired and right your mind's craving for something of, of substance like to have a good book i think is is the perfect way to end the day aside from fucking just saying exactly how about having sex in an f-150 while listening <laughs> to an audiobook that seems like maybe the best way to end the day you know you write that country song i'm sure someone in nashville will sing it my man <laughs> who would you want to <laughs> sing that song if you could pick any country artist who would who should sing that song yeah i don't know i don't i don't know country music you know country? You know? no wow. you know in arizona, yeah, no, okay, yeah, okay. cowboy from arizona i don't and i don't know country music wow. if i had to pick i'm a real i'm a hard rock kind of sore Hard rock. really a, a cl what you classic kids rock. would call classic rock <laughs> so if you can make a grunge song out of an f-150 a horse and a diamond ring that i'm going to give my wife yes and some good books challenge accepted bro, there it is. it's way it's way too upbeat for a grunge song but i'm just right. saying it'd be nice <laughs> <laughs> if kurt cobain could only be alive today he would totally kill that song he yeah. would totally write it as a joke yes right exactly <laughs> okay back to the deep questions there what it, lesson in life did you have to learn the hard way oh shit i mean i look anyone that lives their life with no regrets is either lying to you or has grown up you know, like John Travolta and Bubble Boy. Sure. Um, hardest lessons. I'd say don't be too trusting. Mm. Huh. And under, understand that your friends more often than not do not want to see you succeed. And That's rough. Uh, yeah. yeah, and life can be a little lonely. Mm -hmm. um, but if if that's the way it becomes, you might be doing things the right way. Explain that. So loneliness be a <clears throat> nobody. Nobody likes a winner. Mm. I'll just say it. nobody likes a winner. So um, if you have phases in your life where you're really winning, you're going to have friends that don't want to be around you or that want to pull you down purposely to bring them to bring you mm. to their level okay. because they either have a. Um, uh, you know, a limiting belief that states that they can't make it to that level. So they're going to try to keep you at their level or 
you know, envy is a real thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's a huge sign of weakness, but it's out there and people will go to unbelievable levels um, to um, massage their own egos. Yeah. So in summary, the hard lesson is it's, it's, it pays to be a winner, but it's a lonely road. Pays to be a winner, but it's a lonely road. Is it a road worth traveling in your opinion? It is, um, yeah. I, you know, because if anything worth doing is 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 you got to do well. Mm -hmm. um, Get to the top so, without any friends. That sounds like a miserable peak to me. Yeah, you know, you'll 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 level up your friends. Okay, you'll make new friends. Yeah, that that you should be envious of, and I, and and maybe that's maybe envy. It's not the right term in that context. Maybe it's uh, admiration, right? Mm. And at the end of the day, right. you surround yourself with the people that you are actually like, right? So yeah. if you are a huge winner and you're surrounded by huge losers, it's only a matter of time before you become a huge loser. Definitely agree. With yeah, that. you are definitely the average of the five people, right? That's the, the that's the uh, yeah, that's thing. the adage. Exactly. Yeah, I believe that though, for sure. Okay. I like that. I like that. I like that. Next question is a would you rather? Would you rather be forever six years old or forever 66 years old? Which you don't know yet, but assume. I'm closer. I'm much closer to 66 than to <laughs> six. Sure. Uh, to, I, I, I'd say 66. And oh, I'll tell you why. Okay. I, and, and you might disagree with me on this, but I'm going to buck the science here. Okay. I think that most physical therapists see people that are in, that are mangled in terrible shape, right? Like right. they're not coming to you because they're well-oiled machines. They're coming to you because right. they're jacked up, right? Right. But I I really feel that exercise and diet and recovery strategies right. are such now that you can be as good at definitely at fifty six. Mm as you were at 26, maybe you won't recover from an injury as quickly. Yeah. But I think, I think from a capability standpoint, I think it's there. And I see it in jujitsu all the time. These college wrestlers are in their mid twenties. Like a guy that's in his mid forties can hang with them all day long, especially sure. if he's got skill. Right. So I have to imagine that 66 isn't too far from 46 or 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a more mile, a few more miles on the F one hundred and fifty. See how sure. I did that? You, I uh, see what you did there. I see what you did there. Yeah, that's right. But uh, if you're changing the oil, sure, keep going with this. I like this. And you and you're do and you're and you're hitting those tune ups every thirty thousand miles. That's right. That puppy's gonna run for a million miles, right? right? The the main difference though is in knowledge, right? Mm. And, and I don't I don't mean just like wisdom, like. Um, I mean, in, in, in knowledge of oneself, emotional intelligence, okay. uh, stoicism or control of one's emotions, um, uh, being psychologically fit, all those things come with age and all those things come with huge rewards. Yeah. You're not going to get those things at six years old. Yeah. You know, the, the fleeting gratitude that you have at six, it's nice. You know, that curiosity sure. of, a, of a child is also wonderful, but I think to, um, to live life and be present and have the best of all worlds is something. So 66. 66. I like that. Yeah. I think it definitely when it comes to skill sports, like BJJ, that kind of stuff. I mean, I do remember when I wrestled in high school, just the first, first two years, freshman and sophomore year, um, our wrestling coach was 65 and he could take anybody down any yeah. way that he wanted. Just pick the mat, pick the place. He would tap anybody out. So I mean, you could be, yes, as long as you take care of yourself. I mean, he was in incredible shape. So definitely with any skill sport like that, strictly powerlifting competitions, you're not going to see those guys on the podium, obviously. There's some physiological right. drop off, but sure. any skill sport. Oh, my gosh. I fully support that. Yeah, it's just I've lived that. Yep. I've been crushed by a 65 year old wrestling coach multiple times. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Plus TRT and growth hormone are, you know, it's we have that science dialed yeah uh, at this point so yeah one could take advantage of it if it's if it's right for them especially you know, men that's my like latest i have a group of friends that i have a text thread with and it's just hot takes so we just all type in like some controversial opinion and we're like who co-signs this or who gr agrees or disagrees 
And so my hot take is that over the age of 65, everyone should have access to free anabolic steroids. You don't have to take it, but it's completely free if you want to, because I think the decline of sarcopenia, muscle loss, all these kind of things and frailty cost the healthcare system a shit ton more than just having well-functioning, strong 60, 70, 80 year olds that are still productive, can still work if they wanted to in manual labor. But we just kind of let these people fall off a cliff, you know, and we don't think when we have anabolic steroids that we could just dish out <laughs> to every, I don't know. I mean, we, we do have that already. And that's the thing. Yeah. But what we don't have is a world where it's not taboo. And I think that's yeah. ridiculous, right? right? Now, we also don't want a bunch of 77 year olds walking around with a boner you know, uh, on the subway or something. That's some people's fantasy. I don't know. But, you know? but it don't it don't work that way. It, it's not it's that's not the way it goes, you know, <laughs> not it, yet. And here that's the world here, I want to live. In. Here's what's not taboo that should be taboo. So okay. what is testosterone? What are anabolic steroids or hormones? Right. What is uh, insulin? It's a hormone. Right. We think societally that it's OK to be morbidly obese diabetic and injecting insulin <laughs> but right. performance enhancing drugs are taboo <laughs> that's so true now someone's got that ass backwards yeah and I, it ain't me <laughs> you know what i mean i love when people zoom out and just yeah point to the hypocrisy of society at large because that's a good I'm just point saying. yeah i'm just saying and here and look you know we're, we're non-judgmental we don't fat shame anymore. Sure. It's 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 basically illegal to fat shame. And I don't want anyone to feel badly, right? right? But I'm also a realist. I don't want people to die because they're yeah. unhealthy and they have this illusion that they are healthy and should accept their morbid obesity. Sure. But by the same token, you know, and I'm not on social media anymore, but I can walk down a street in LA mm -hmm. and if I walk long enough, someone will look at me and go, fucking mouth breather. Like, like a muscular dude is right. something to 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 bring shame. Sure. Right. Like I should be ashamed of being in reasonably good shape. Right. That paradigm and that dichotomy is also ass backward. And mm -hmm. look, if you're gonna accept one, you gotta accept the other one too. Mm -hmm. Um or how about this? Everyone just does whatever they want and don't judge anybody. That's another world we could live in. We great. could. I prefer to live in the 77-year-old with boners walking around world, but you want to live <laughs> in the non-judgmental world. So it's up to you, sir. Yeah. That's the world you choose. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Well, let's go through another fun question. Let's go. Let's say if someone woke up in your body tomorrow... What is the one tip or instruction manual you should give them so they know how to operate your body? Jeez. Like if you have a bum shoulder, say don't don't do this motion. Shoulder press, it hurts. I mean, there's so many dick jokes in this one that sure. it's it, like it's too obvious. So I'm not too even obvious. Go there. Yeah. You know, you know, when we opened up um, the interview, I was talking about how my Zoom needs to warm up. Yeah. A little bit. And Thirty seconds in, it's good. Okay. I'd, I, I tell the operator of my of my meat suit the same thing. Right. Like, okay, you know, don't pull, turn that F one fifty on, let it run for, you know, I half don't. a country music song. <laughs> yeah, you know? and then and then you get going. One Kurt and it'll Cobain run like track, a dream, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, like Yellow Lead Better by Pearl Jam could be fourteen minutes long. So just run through one tenth of that. Sure. And and you're good. Making them do math and stuff. I like that. Yeah, that's an extra <laughs> extra bonus for that person. <laughs> Count to 200 super fast. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I like it. Yes. Delay. No math involved. No math involved. You can't count. It's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never said who's in your meat suit. So, yeah, you got to have a, a, a literate, scientifically and mathematically capable person. We do have a vastly disparate uh, amount of scientific acumen in society right and that you is true you know. as evidenced by covid and all all of those uh you, you know and that party anyway that party yes it's all another i usually do have i might get to one or two covid but i don't know we'll see i'm mm -hmm. kind of just rolling through these another deep one is going to be what do you want your last words on the planet to be 
any favorite phrases or oh man original thoughts you've come up with i mean we could take it like uh you know arnold style and go hasta la vista baby or something cool like that that'd be like yeah. super cinematic yes kind of cheesy uh you know i don't know mm -hmm. i you know i want here's what i want i want those around me in my last moment in my last moments to dictate what i'm gonna say in other words I want what I say to be a genuine reaction to those last precious moments. Uh, wow. And it could, it could be anything. It could be, I love yeah. you. It could be, fuck you. It could be, dick joke. Yeah. yeah, dick joke. It could be like, I'm really going to miss my F-150. You know, any, Do you have an F-150? Please tell me you I actually don't. have one. Dang it. I don't. You just spoiled this whole interview. I thought, but I have. I, I'm just the F-150 of meat suits of dudes. <laughs> That's right. That's still a really good thing. I, I'll never forget that. Yeah. Okay. We'll jump back into the fun land here. What was your hey, favorite man. cereal growing up? Favorite cereal. Favorite cereal. You know, I was more of like a bacon and eggs kind of guy, kind of really? kid. Honestly, okay. yeah. Immigrant parents. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're like, what is this? They're probably cereal? chefs. This is yeah, this is not food. You know? Yeah, yeah, you had paella. Yeah, little paella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're northern Spaniards, so it was more the pork, you know. Oh, the pork. More the okay. more the hand that you slice off that that leg that's sitting on your countertop. Yeah, you know? that's right. Did you have that at home? You should yeah. totally. Yeah, I still we have one here in my house now, and my wife's oh. not even Spanish, and she's not what? Is she? She's American. <laughs> she's Californian. She's, she, no, she's a white girl from Michigan. Michigan, okay. corn, corn fed white girl. <laughs> That's um, right. favorite cereal. I, you know, I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll just take something healthy. How about the okay. Cheerios? Not even the honey nut ones, just like right. the plain Cheerios that are just oats. Whoa, you know, raise the HDL cholesterol, lower the uh triglycerides. I like that. that. Yeah, the okay. plain Cheerios. Okay, That's yeah, a good one. That's a good one. I was, what was I? I was the opposite. I was a very sugar cereal kind of kid, I guess. So like cinnamon I could toast tell. crunch or yeah, one of those for sure. It looks like a sugar. <laughs> Lucky charms. <laughs> Lucky charms, yes. I <laughs> saw a 59-year-old dude eat a bowl of Lucky Charms at a Ritz Carlton buffet not but <laughs> one week ago. And I go to him, I go, bro, this is like a $70 breakfast <laughs> buffet, and you're eating Lucky Charms? Lucky Char <laughs> Seriously, dude? Oh my gosh. That's it's so hilarious. classless. It was actually kind of classy. See, he did the full circle on you. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Diet. Yeah. It's like oh. man buns and yeah. uh those ridiculous hats that the hipsters wear. You know, they're okay. so ridiculous. They're so yeah, unclassy cool. that they're yeah. cool. Yeah. What's your take on mullets? Is that should that come back or should that just die in the eighties? <clears throat> you know, you gotta be rough to wear a mullet in this mm. day and age. Right. I mean that that's that really says something about your attitude. That that's saying that you give zero fucks, maybe even less than zero fucks. Right. Um yeah. far be it for me to ban a hairstyle. Uh, you know, I I don't have that luxury. Sure. But um if you want to do it, I may hate on you a little bit, but God bless you. Okay. That's my that's my take on mullets. God bless them. Yeah. That's the thing. Whenever I see somebody with cauliflower ear, I'm just like, that's not the guy you fight in the bar. You know, check their ears first, make sure they have normal ears, and then you can proceed. But don't ears are yes, ears are the best indicator of what kind of beating you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. It is 100%, true. Hundred percent. Look, check their ears. That's a polite yep. pro tip for everybody out there. Yeah. All right, we're bumping up on the ten minute warning here, so we'll we'll knock out a couple more of these. Next one's a deep. What is the best gift? you've ever received in your life i mean my child right uh, nothing nothing um there's no material possession that could ever uh, uh f-150 come on that's a layup <laughs> i never got i never had one <laughs> hey, no, you never got one. the platinum f-150 might rival the birth of your daughter i don't know i'm just saying that i'm the f-150 of dudes i'm not saying that i drive an f-150 okay. it would be fitting i understand like, what you're I'll saying check, i'll re-listen to this episode see if the quote is correct yeah <laughs> there you go um no my, my child for sure there's nothing in the world that uh that could um you know 
uh, usurp the feeling that you that that I got from becoming a father. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. I I can believe that. I can believe. It. Next deep question is: Where do you find peace in life? So it's funny. I I just had a discussion um, with my dudes in the in the in the men's circle that we both run in, mm-hmm. and um, uh, I had a deeply spiritual. Uh, spiritual yeah we'll go with that i had a deeply spiritual experience in the mountains of sedona arizona and it was uh it was an inner peace that you know unlike anything i ever experienced and it was it came at a time in my life where there was some turmoil there was definitely some obstacles to overcome Mm -hmm. um just a few things were not going right and um I got up into this uh, canyon, red rocks everywhere, and you know it's the beauty. It's stark beauty, right? So like mm-hmm. that'll that'll strike you. But there's there was something else going on that brought on, um, uh, you know, an inner peace that I don't think I could ever. Um, I don't think I could ever replicate that anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And I still go back there. I still go on a little retreats okay. every once in a while when I need to clear my mind. And I'm actually overdue for a little trip up there, right. hike up into the same little area. And, um, and yeah, I, I find my, I find my chi there, my inner, my inner peace. Yeah. And for everyone that doesn't know the, the background image behind this guy right here, Manny is actually a photo that he took. So very yeah, talented yeah. photographer. Well. South of so this is in Phoenix, okay. Phoenix area, nice. uh, east of Phoenix, Superstition Mountains. Superstition Mountains. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I do find the nature thing is very in my own life very compelling when I'm trying to look for peace or have peace. I've done a ten day silent meditation retreat in Palm Desert kind of thing, and uh, being somewhere in the arid, I don't know, climate, I think really does hit it for me too. It's just so desolate, and you're just thinking about yeah minimalism and you're stripping all the bullshit away from your life and what really matters and you're in a desert and quiet and see all the stars i mean it's yeah it's always a powerful thing for my my yep for sure yep um let's go let's go with our last question that i always ask if you could ask a question to any stranger you can make up an imaginary stranger walking down the street or a specific type of stranger in a certain city you could ask any question in the world, nothing was too superficial or deep. What would you ask about your fellow human? What would you want to know? Hmm. I think you learn a lot by learning what inspires an individual. Mm. So I, I think if you ask that simple question, hey, what inspires you? Yeah. The answer will tell you a lot of what you need to know about that stranger. And since this is a podcast about strangers, it is. Um, you know, I'll ask it of you. What what inspires you? It's a great question. I literally just posted something yesterday about where I'm currently getting inspiration, and uh, it was from a Jocko podcast. He did a whole thing about Booker T. Washington. Yeah, and, heard uh, it. You did. Okay, I did. Oh my. Yeah, I mean, to go from slavery to self-made and create a whole Tuskegee Institute and the whole mentality of just move forward and no matter what someone's prejudiced against you with or what their, you know, issue is, you know, just to kind of face it and not even uh, begrudge that person, just kind of move on, you know, and, and build, be so good in your field, so outstanding that they can't deny you and deny the talent and deny the hard work and So I just, that podcast, and I really want to read that book next, the whole Booker T kind of autobiography, if if that's what it was, but a lot of inspiration there. I think Uh, a lot to be dug up. I'm glad Jocko highlighted it for his audience. I don't think maybe a lot of those guys would be into that kind of thing, but uh, it came across my feed and I just absolutely took to it. So um, inspiring podcast. You know what I learned about you is that you're an empath. You put yourself in Mm. uh, Booker T Washington's shoes and uh, I I think just from hearing your answer, right. I think you felt maybe a little bit of what he must have felt mm-hmm. coming up at that era, um, mm-hmm. being a man of color yeah. uh, and only having success as an option. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that tells me that you're you're going to do great things, too. Sure as hell hope so. I really appreciate you saying that, too, Manny. And I appreciate 
you taking the time to jump on a Zoom call with somebody as a random message on an internet chat. So it's always exciting. Thanks for the opportunity. Tyler. I really, yeah, I really appreciate it. To everybody out there listening, I thank you for your support. This is Tyler telling you to go talk to a stranger. Peace.